Welcome back to Trucks and Junk. Today on part four of the Junkyard Golf Cart Build, we're going to be working on the intake, the exhaust, the wiring, and the shifter. So stay tuned, you're not going to want to miss it. Now on part one, two, and three, we tore the golf cart apart, built a new frame for it, put a live axle and mounted this engine. So if you guys haven't seen those, go back and watch those and then come back to this one. All right, let's get to it. First up, we're going to do the carburetor. Now, I've got a whole other video if you guys are interested in it, the difference between these three intakes. So if that interests you, go check it out. I go over the difference between them, what they look like on the engine, and the reason why I'm going to go with the shorty that kicks it to the side of the engine. So if that interests you, go check it out. got that on there looks pretty good now my plan is is this right here is where the original pedal pushed in for the electric motor so I'm thinking I'll build a little bracket right here bring this cable around underneath and bring it through the hole and then bring the cable through and tie it in to that. That way I can still use the original gas pedal for the cart. These only go in one way, thankfully. CDI box, came with the starter cylinder, came with the ignition switch, which is awesome because now the golf cart actually has a real key. It comes with the kill switch, the starter button, and it also comes with the coil to fire the spark plug. So literally all you got to do is wire in your stator. And the only reason they don't wire this for you with plugs is because there's three different style stators for the engine, but they're all pretty much color coded, basic and simple. Um, you wire that in, plug it all up, hook a battery to it, and it should start. purposes I'm just gonna wire these together for now but when we do the final build together I'm gonna probably go get me a plug to where I can just plug these in and solder everything together before we just plug it up and we're done but for now we're just gonna wire them together for 
texting purposes. Anytime you're messing with wires and stuff like this, make sure you have the battery hooked up. Because this would be the time you would fry something if you did. And if you have a raw connection for testing purposes, cover it up with electrical tape that way they don't end up accidentally touching each other. Okay, so as you guys can tell, the wiring's pretty simple. Straightforward, everything plugs up. The only thing I had to wire up was the stator. And like I said, this is just for testing purposes right now. Because once I know this runs and everything works like it should, then when I come back and do all my final welds and everything that we need to do, I'll get a plug for this at AutoZone or Vance. Something that's six wires that I can plug together. And then all I have to do is plug it in and unplug it, depending on what project I want to do with it. But it's that simple. Like, it's just got your, like I said, your coal right here. And then it's got your key switch, your starter solenoid, your CDI box, your charging rectifier. And your kill switch and it's that simple like there's not much to it it just seems like there's much to it but all right next will be the exhaust we might actually hear this thing run okay for the exhaust i've got this used one that i picked up off of ebay for five bucks came off a little go-kart uh it's very restricted i know this so for now, I'm gonna cut this thing up, make me a fab pipe coming out here to the back, put this in the back because down the road, I'm gonna make a custom exhaust for it that's not restricted. But for now, this is what I got, so this is what we're gonna use. Okay, we officially have exhaust, carburetor, wiring harness, engine mounts, frame, live axle, chain. All right, I guess we should put some fuel in it and a battery and hear it run. What do you guys think? Let's do it. 
testing purposes only, I'm just going to use this old tank that I've got. Now, anytime you guys are going to start these new engines, the Predator 212, these 125s, any new engine that comes in the box, some of them come with oil, some of them don't come with oil. They're not supposed to come with oil. Some of them get shipped that way, some of them don't. I don't know why that is, but you should always, always check the oil. Make sure it has it. If it don't have it, put it in there. Because the last thing you want to do is go through all this and start this thing and it ain't got no oil and then you lock it up and then they're not going to warranty it because you ran it without oil. And there's a prime example. There's no oil on the dipstick. None. So this is one that came without oil. On these little engines, I just use Safe 30. It's just the perfect oil for these little engines. The cherry funnels are clean. You just add a little bit at a time and keep checking it. Don't go pouring the whole quart in there, it ain't gonna hold it. That right there is about a half a quart. And that is perfect. So, yeah, half a quart is what this one took. Wasn't much. So now we got fuel, we got oil, just need a battery. Anytime you're gonna start these things up as well, guys, jack the back end up. You don't know if it's in gear or anything. Just gonna throw my used four wheel battery in here real quick. Do with what you got. Always strive for more, but make do with what you got. Goes nothing. Oh yeah. Uh, it's not vibrating. It's not it's actually running really good right out the box. That carburetor ain't got the weight on it though. Change everything. Okay guys, this is what I'm going to do for the shifter. So I got the original shifter that came with the engine, and I got this metal bar. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to put this metal bar inside of this shifter, like so, and I'm going to weld it to the inside of the shifter. But I'm also going to leave this lever on here, just in case something, if something goes wrong with what I'm getting ready to build, I can still hand shift it to get it home. But I'm going to weld this inside the shifter, and then this is going to go straight into the engine where it belongs. And then I'm going to weld a metal bar that comes up this side and bring it right beside the seat. So when I pull forward and back, it should turn this. That being said, I'm going to have to re-support it somehow. So I'm probably going to weld this bar to the frame. And then weld a couple nuts that fit over this on here. And then slide that through the two nuts on this bar 
just to resupport this to where it don't move like this. It'll just, the only motion it can do is back and forth. That's my plan, let's see how it works. There's going to be the first issue with that plan. So the original shifter goes into the engine right here. Whereas you can tell this mount is now in my way from coming straight out from there. So now I'm going to have to sister this mount and weld or another piece of square tubing on the back side of this mount. So this mount can still be there, but then I'll have a notch out for that shifter to be able to go through. this bar right through the frame here like I said how loose that is I'll probably even though it would probably do it just fine I'm just gonna extra support it bring a bar out right here bring it up to where it would have that extra support on this side use as a speed square as long as you got two factory edges on a piece of metal if you it's a really tight spot you can use those two factory edges as a teeny speed square stock one is so it should hold up but I don't really want to just butt weld this because I don't think that'll be very good so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld a nut to this and then drill this nut out a little bit to where this fits in here better and then weld this to the nut that way it's a lot stronger than just butt welding that
get it mounted in there. I'm probably gonna just use a hose clamp on that for now. Not weld it to the frame yet, just so when we take all this apart for the final welds, it's not so hard that we can test it with the hose clamp by hose clamping that, that piece of frame that we welded on there for now. And then once everything is done and final, that's when we'll go ahead and weld that to the frame. Okay, this is what I got. So now you got the shifter handle. And this side probably see a little better. Okay. So I've got the shifter handle coming up beside the seat here. To where I can shift it down or shift it up. That turns that rod, which also turns that shifter on the engine. That would be reverse. That would be neutral. That would be first. Second. And third. Second, first, neutral. Nope. Neutral. Heck yeah. Okay guys, that completes today's video. So now that that thing is running, the only thing left to do to take this thing for a ride is to put some brakes on it and figure out a way to keep that engine cool underneath the seat then we can go take this thing for a ride before the final wheel so if you guys don't want to miss that you guys know what to do to see you on the next one see y'all later bye